Ladies and gentlemen, Gil Reyes. I've actually I've been in front of crowds all my life in one way or another. I did all kinds of MC sort of work in college and even did a little bit of radio work uh, when, I, when I first left school. But it's very different, I think, when you get up on the Moth stage because it's really just you and there's no other agenda except whatever you need to get across to the audience. I just picked up the phone and a voice on the other end said, go immediately to the emergency room, your kidneys are failing. And even as I get out of bed and I start to get dressed, I'm thinking, this is absurd. There's got to be a mistake. I'm in my 20s. I'm invincible. I'm immortal. I don't even need health insurance. I don't have health insurance. <laughs> it's completely different to get up there as yourself. It lays you very bare, I think, in a lot of ways. And you have to be willing to um, put all of yourself out there, I think, to tell an effective story in that sort of venue. Um, so that's, I think that's the biggest difference. And a little bit of background here. My own little kamikaze independent streak, as I like to think of it, launched when I was in my late teens and I had my traumatic coming out experience. I think this is changing for generations now, but uh, my peers, we traded coming out experiences like war stories. And I would tell people about my parents, who even though we lived in Kentucky, I didn't think they would react like this. Because at this point in my life, I'd been to church more frequently than they had. And yet, when I told them I like guys, there was this thermonuclear, mega-church-worthy neoconservative meltdown. My dad even once, out of the blue, said, I don't ever want you to bring anybody home. I never want to meet anybody you're seeing. I was really surprised the first time I, I got up and told this story how emotional I got at certain parts of it. I don't know if it's the lights in your eyes or, or just that all that attention is there. Or, you know, it's also partly because I think these audiences want it. They want to know and, and they want to go on that journey with you. And I think that that's a huge part of um, what a storyteller probably feels up on the stage. My hospital stay turned into 10 days. And there were specialists and tests. And about a month later, everything starts to come into view. My kidneys are functioning at 10%. And the real fix here, the holy grail, is a kidney transplant. That's how you get back in the game. That's how you return to society and become a functioning member, right? There are two ways to do this. You get on the national transplant list. If you are able to do that, uh, it may take years to get a kidney. And generally, those are cadaver kidneys. And they're not usually as healthy and so they don't last as long. So really, what you want is a kidney from a living donor. Sean really wanted to get tested. But, talk about a commitment. <laughs> I mean, in Kentucky, we can't even give each other rings. <laughs> we can't, but you know what I mean. <clears throat> And I remember this day, because he would, we would talk about it, and we'd go back and forth, and I remember this day where he finally convinced me and he said, look, you know, it doesn't matter if we're together, if we're not. Whatever happens, if I can do this for you now, I want to. And as the months went on, and I went on dialysis, and I got worse, and other donors, my dad, was disqualified for medical reasons. Sean called me one day near Christmas and he said he had an early Christmas present for me. And he was as good a match as my dad. And he asked me if I'd let him give me a kidney. And I said yes. And we started spending time well. This particular story, I tell it all the time. I tell it to anybody who listens. I tell it to groups of high school students um, around Kentucky, around Louisville, because I've found that it has changed people's perception a lot of the time and that they begin to think about um, uh, same-sex couples in a more um, 
more favorable or, you know, maybe just a different light. Not necessarily that they were unfavorable for per se, but that they see something new in a same-sex relationship that maybe they didn't get before. So any opportunity to tell this story to a large audience is important to me because I, I, I feel like it's, it's going to be part of at least changing a few people's minds. And we went into the hospital and on the morning of the surgery, they take Sean away first. But before he goes, and we're standing there surrounded by his family and my parents, who have been around and have been supportive, and my mother is crying, harder than Sean's mother is crying. And she leans down and she takes his hand and she thanks him. And my dad even said not too long ago that he's like a son. And I never asked for proof because you're supposed to rely on faith. But I have a 10 inch scar across my abdomen and a boyfriend of almost eight years and a family to know that I am loved. Thank you. Gail Reyes. Beautiful. I'm Moth Storyteller Gil Reyes, and subscribe to Thinker for more stories like these.